the Supreme Court cleared the way for an execution in Alabama. Obamacare enrollment hit a record number. And Jon Stewart is returning to the show he made famous. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Christina Quinn. It's Thursday, January 25th. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. Number one. Fighting has intensified around the city of Khan Yunus in southern Gaza. Aid groups say that thousands of civilians are trapped or struggling to flee the area. Yesterday, 12 people were killed and more than 75 were injured after tank shells struck a United Nations training center. A UN official said around 800 people were sheltering there. Tomorrow, the International Court of Justice, that's the UN's top court, will deliver an initial ruling on South Africa's request that the court order Israel to stop its military campaign in Gaza. South Africa also argues in its case that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza, but that issue will be decided later. Number two. Ohio lawmakers have banned gender-affirming care for trans minors. Yesterday, legislators overrode a veto from Ohio's Republican Governor Mike DeWine. It means most trans youths will be banned from accessing treatments like puberty blockers and hormone therapy in the state. The law also blocks transgender girls from playing on school sports teams designated for girls and women. It goes into effect in about 90 days. The override was met with an emotional response in the state Senate and one protester was dragged out of the chamber during the debate. People, these are all the loving children. We need to support them. Please do not overturn, overturn this veto. Let's go, let's go. Let's and go. please don't break my arm. But I stand, and you should stand for the children of Ohio! This is part of a wave of anti-trans legislation that has been advanced across the nation in recent years. Ohio joins more than 20 states that have imposed restrictions on gender-affirming care, and hundreds of other anti-trans bills have made their way through state legislatures. Number three. Alabama plans to carry out a controversial execution tonight using nitrogen gas. The prisoner is Kenneth Eugene Smith, who was convicted in a 1988 murder-for-hire scheme. The state tried to execute him by lethal injection in 2022, but officials couldn't find a vein to administer the drugs, so the execution was called off. If tonight's execution goes ahead, it would be the first time in more than 40 years that the U.S. has used a new execution method. Human rights experts say the untested method could cause pain and amount to torture. Yesterday, the Supreme Court cleared the way for the execution to go ahead, but Smith's lawyers may still attempt another appeal. At number four, Obamacare enrollment has hit a record level. More than 21 million people have signed up for health plans through the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplaces. That's according to numbers released by the Biden administration yesterday. The figures are pretty remarkable. Signups have jumped by 5 million since last year, and there's been a roughly 80% surge in enrollment for the ACA since President Biden took office in 2021. But despite its popularity, the future of the program isn't secure. Former President Donald Trump says he wants to try again to repeal Obamacare if he's reelected, but he hasn't put forward a replacement health care plan that would provide comparable coverage at the same or less cost. Grounded Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets could fly again in the next few days. That's number five. These planes have been grounded since a terrifying accident this month that saw part of an Alaskan Airlines plane fly off mid-flight, leaving a gaping hole in the side of the jet. But the FAA has now approved a set of instructions for airlines to find and fix problems on the planes. So yesterday, Alaska and United Airlines both said they will resume services. Alaska plans to bring its first MAX 9s back into service Friday, and United could have its MAX 9 planes flying again by Sunday. Now, if you're flying over the next week, you're probably wondering if it's going to be safe. The airlines say it will be. Alaska said flights will only resume after rigorous inspections are completed on each plane. But there are still questions that need to be answered about the accident. Federal investigators have still not said exactly what caused it. 
Number six, John Stewart is returning to The Daily Show for the 2024 election year. Stewart will host the Comedy Central show on Monday nights starting February 12th. He'll also serve as executive producer for every episode as rotating hosts cycle through other nights. Stewart hosted the satirical talk show from 1999 to 2015, and he turned it into an Emmy winning cultural force. But it has struggled in recent years and has gone without a permanent host since Trevor Noah left in 2022. Chris McCarthy, the president and CEO of Paramount Media Networks, said yesterday that he hopes Stewart will help us all make sense of what he called the insanity and division of the upcoming election. And at number seven, an American chemist's salty tea recipe has distressed British tea lovers. Michelle Frankel is a professor at Bryn Mawr College in Pennsylvania. She has a new book all about tea, and it suggests techniques for making a perfect brew, including adding a dash of salt or a squeeze of lemon. Sounds pretty nice, right? Well, not for people in Britain. The nation of tea lovers has reacted with utter horror at the mere suggestion that their favorite hot drink should be tampered with. News outlets ran shocked headlines about the recipe, And it even led to an intervention by the U.S. Embassy in London, which assured worried Brits that adding salt to tea was not official United States policy. But in its statement, the embassy couldn't resist stirring up a little trouble. It said its staff could, quote, continue to make tea in the proper way by microwaving it. Cup of tea! All right, you're all caught up. But don't forget, we also have a newsletter. Huzzah! You can have the 7 Morning Briefing delivered to your inbox early every weekday morning. All you have to do is sign up. Just hit the link in our show notes. I'm Christina Quinn. I'll meet you back here tomorrow.